Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel for today's video. So in this video I decided I am going to recreate a Toontown Plaza. Now I've had my plaza built for a long time and recently I decided to just completely demolish it mainly because of Tiana's palace coming soon so I knew I'd have to redo my plaza anyway so I thought whilst it is completely empty I would make a Toontown Plaza. Now a few people have asked me in the past to create a Toontown and I've just never had chance to get around to it I'm so sorry and never really had the space for it so I thought while my plaza is gone this would be the perfect opportunity to create a Toontown so I used a lot of the Mickey and Friends houses and some of the other buildings in the game that made sense so let's get started so to start off with as you can see I've placed in all of the houses and buildings that I felt like made sense in here so in terms of character houses I used Mickey, Goofy, Daisy and Minnie and also Oswald's cinema house as well I would love to have got Donald up here but as we have no ponds it just didn't work out so that is the only shame about doing it in the plaza is that you can't include Donald but I wanted to include these particular houses and then from the premium shop I included the bakery, house skin and I also included the fire station from one of the previous stuff Pass, and then I went in and started mapping in my pathway I used the bordered brick pathway just because I felt like this light brick color made sense for like a bright Toontown theme and I started mapping that in now I wanted the pathway in here to feel very kind of like mismatched and random um, to kind of fit that like quirky feel of Toontown I didn't want it to just be these really obvious straight pathways and kind of how I'd done it before in my plaza so I decided to map that in and figure out how I could do this in a kind of like nice random way to give me these little pockets of grass and little areas that I could decorate with other things so I started off by mapping that in so I knew where everything was going I will say with this build there wasn't a huge amount of planning that went into it I kind of knew what houses I wanted to use and what kind of like main core areas I wanted to use as well as some of the furniture but when it comes to the actual layout you will still see me like chop and change how things look change the angle of things as you can see I've changed the direction of Oswald's cinema house to kind of make what I would planned for it a lot better but for the most part I kind of just do go in and chop and change how the path looks and the placement of things as we go along um, so just so you know things will chop and change as we go along with this as it was kind of just one of those things that I wanted to see how it went as we went on and then I started adding in all of the trees I started off with Daisy and Minnie section I kind of wanted to do this build in sections so I kind of pick a corner and go with that and kind of decorate that area before moving on to the next so for Daisy and Minnie section I obviously wanted to include some of the pink cherry blossom trees to match their pink houses but I also included some of the other trees I'm going to be using in the biome like the red maple the green maples and also the oaks I just felt like they made sense in this kind of build I then as you can see went in and placed down a lot of furniture that I knew I wanted to use so I then went in and started positioning this and figuring out where I wanted everything to go like making a little picnic gazebo area in between Minnie and Daisy's houses as well as looking at the other furniture that I'd placed down and started reorganizing it into the locations that I felt like they made sense in this first corner of the build
Now in this build I did include two new furniture items that are new to the game now if you've seen lots of videos I will link Tanny's down below and it will show give you an explanation of how to get these but there is a little like cherry blossom path item and also a little brick corner post item that no one can seem to figure out how has ended up in the game you have to kind of do a particular dream snap function to even get access to these so if you haven't seen these before and you're wondering how to get them I will link Tanny's video down below as she kind of goes through it all properly and explains how to get them but I did want to include them in this build just because both of them made so much sense in the builds I was doing. Once I had done Minnie and Daisy's area for the most part, I do go in and add stuff to it eventually. I then started looking at the other furniture I had placed out where I could reposition it to. So I started mapping out the bakery little courtyard area. This is obviously going to be a seating area. Now with the bakery, I usually go for a more like rustic cottage core look for the exterior of it. But as this is a Toontown build, I obviously wanted to go full Toontown colourful vibe. So I went in with some of the Disney Park style path tables as well as the pretzel stand and the refreshment stand to kind of create this little courtyard area and then I started repositioning a lot of the other furniture I'd included including uh, moving the brick posts to every exit and entrance of the plaza and then matching these with the Alice in Wonderland hedges we have from a premium shop bundle I just love the look of these little brick posts kind of introducing you to the biome and then the hedges kind of going alongside that to blend it in really well I would love to get something like these brick posts in an actual fence um, I think that would be really really lovely at some point obviously we've kind of just people have just kind of magically discovered these from the dream snaps tab which i'm very impressed about but i would love to see something kind of extending from this in the future so we can use more of this kind of stuff but for now i paired it with the hedges started creating this kind of like main pathway area introducing you into the biome with some of the golden clock towers a balloon arch and lots of other little functional items and then started dotting things around and moving them to where i wanted them to be My main theme in this biome going in was I obviously wanted it to be very bright and colourful but I also wanted there to be a lot of like greenery and a lot of flowers included so I used a lot of the flower planters that are craftable in all the different styles you can get. I was going to include some of the Eternity Isle planters as well but I just felt like they didn't quite work with the other ones so I stuck to the base game ones so they will be accessible to everyone as long as you have all of the flowers that you need to craft them and also I think like soil and stone maybe to make the actual plant itself and I dotted these around in the areas I felt like it made sense to have those little planters just adding a bit more structure and then use the other foliage that we have in the um, foliage tab to go around trees and to decorate in between those to create this really bright colourful look around the whole of the biome.
once I had done that kind of left section of the biome, I then went in and started doing the entrance to Oswald's movie theatre. Now I obviously wanted this to have a really nice grand entrance look using some of the Oswald items that we have in game as well as some of the like movie theatre style items as well. Now I would love to be able to get some kind of like black and white trees and foliage at some point to really make this area a lot more catered to him. But for now I just went in with some items that we had from him as well as some of the craftable black white and gold balloons just to kind of give it that really nice royal theme and I will go in as well after this and add in a tree and lots of other decorations around behind it just to kind of enclose this area off and make it seem like an area that you kind of have to go in and find and I just wanted it to have this really nice kind of grand entrance look and make sense for it to be a movie theatre in the biome. Now once I had kind of done most of what I wanted to do on that side of the biome I then headed on to the opposite side on the right and started figuring out where I wanted all the furniture I had to go so I knew here I needed to decorate around Mickey's house as well as the fire station and then the bakery and then also Goofy's at the back and we also had these little kind of open areas that I could kind of do what I wanted to with so for example next to the main street bit I had this little gap of extra pathway that instead of just making this big open space of path I decided to create this little bench seating area with some of the Toy Story items and previous Star Path stuff to kind of create just this really cute eclectic seating area which I felt like just filled this gap really really well and made it so that it wasn't so open and bare and then after that I started repositioning the furniture we had left to figure out how I wanted to design everything how I wanted to incorporate the hedges into the build itself and really close in all of these existing buildings that are still left on this side. Now something else I did do in this biome was incorporated the naturally spawning flowers into the build. I did wait to do this until I kind of got a lot of it built just because it could then show me what space I actually had to use. And this meant that I wouldn't have flowers kind of randomly trying to spawn everywhere and they were part of the actual design and I went and did that. Before closing off the little bakery section with some of the Remy fences, I absolutely love these fences that come with the raw iron that we get from the Remy quest and it was a really nice way to close in the bakery and make it seemed like this really kind of quaint area and then I started decorating around that with lots of foliage and figuring out what else I wanted to include in this area around it and how to map out this final right section.
Now for Mickey's, I did really want it to have this nice like white picket fence look. There wasn't much um, space to use the white picket fence for Daisy and Minnie's houses, which was a shame. So I decided I definitely wanted to include it for Mickey's. And I created this little mini outdoor garden area where I included a pet house that matches his house, where I will go in at the end and add in some of the critters into this. So you'll see them roaming around and it just really added to the character of this area. And then I started mapping in how I wanted to do the fire station. I used the iron brick fence around it to kind of map in the spacing for it and also use the mickey water tower and the outhouse that are both craftable to give it this really nice rustic feel and make it seem a little bit like it's it's kind of like an industrial area if that makes sense but it still had the really nice bright toontown look like the rest of the biome does Now in the center between Mickey and the fire station, I had this really nice big open space. So I decided to create this really nice like floral design area. I wanted to include Mickey's water fountain, one of like the original ones you can get. And I wanted to really give that a nice bit of decoration. So I started putting in some flower beds and also as you'll see as I go on, I add in some bushes and things like that. And create this really cute little courtyard section, which I actually love the look of once I've once I finished it. I think it just looks really, really bright, really warm and really reminds me of the kind of like topiary areas you get at Disney parks so I included some of the Mickey lamp posts in this as well these are recently from Scrooge's so if you don't have them yet they are from Scrooge's so hopefully they'll pop up for you soon but I did add those in there as well as a couple little bench seating areas and then I started working on some seating outside Goofy's house for Mickey and friends to sit and enjoy together Now once I'd mapped in the seating area by Goofies, I then went in and made this little picnic blanket spot which I thought was so so cute to go in this little gap next to Goofies, it fit perfectly. And then I started figuring out the foliage on this final little bit where it's between Goofies and the bakery and I wanted this to again feel very overgrown but also have this really nice bright look. I included one of the craftable stone wells and also again a lot of the Toontown lampposts that are from a previous star path. You could definitely use some of the craftable lampposts in place of these if you don't have them. I just use these because obviously they are Toontown themed so it made sense but you could use whatever lighting you wanted in here and it would still work really well I think but I then went in and added some bushes and some bright kind of plants and things like that to finish off the build. 
So this is the final build I'll take you from the entrance from the meadow and as you head up you can see we've got the nice Mickey arch. On the brick post I've placed some of the Mickey blue neon lights on here which just look amazing at night time. If you do want to see it at night time I'll probably post a TikTok of it at some point. But as our main feature we have got the Toontown water fountain with Mickey and Minnie which was from the premium shop. This is just such a gorgeous fountain and obviously is based on the one from Toontown itself at Disney. We have got some Mickey and Minnie balloons around the entranceway and some of the Toontown lampposts to straight away introduce you to this Toontown theme and give you a really bright, nice entranceway. And you can see the clock towers in the back and I used some of the It's a Small World rainbow pillars as well to add a little bit more character into this section. As we head round, you can see we have got the kind of divided pathway between Daisy and Minnie's area and Oswald's little section with the figment topiary introducing you into Daisy and Minnie's. I used the pink Figaro house and added in some different pink critters in here to fit the vibe. And again, as you can see, there's a lot of cherry blossom trees, both furniture ones and also ones from the premium shop. We've got Daisy's little bench and a water fountain. And in the back corner, we have got the really gorgeous craftable gazebo with the beauty and the beast pink picnic blanket underneath i just felt like this fits so well with the pink vibe of both their houses and it all just looks so bright and colorful in here i just love how it looks i think this might be one of my favorite sections of the whole build itself Heading out of here, we have obviously the exit out to the Sunlit Plateau, which again has the brick posts leading you out with the neon lights on top. And then I have the fountain we got with Fairy Godmother in the middle of this little grassy area to be a really nice water feature. And then behind Oswald's, we have the exit out to the meadow as well as a couple of the Monsters Inc. snack machines. I just felt like they kind of made sense in the Toontown vibe I was going for. They just looked very kind of bright and modern, which I really liked. And then we head into Oswald's area where you can see we have a photo booth and a little popcorn machine before we head into the more classic area. I've included obviously his car, which I absolutely love, and some red carpet into the building. We've got a lot of warm lights and a lot of gold items in here, as well as the craftable popcorn buckets from the Disney Parks event. And then to finish it off, some lampposts and some gold, white and black balloons. As we head out of there and we go across to the right hand side you can see straight away we've got our little mini seating area which just kind of filled this big open gap and then we have the bakery with the really nice courtyard outside I love how this turned out and the tables actually match the bunting of the bakery which I just loved I've placed some food and some drinks on here as well as on the refreshment stand and added in some balloons to really make it look like a really nice bright vibe in here. As we exit out there, we've just got our little courtyard area between the bakery and the rest of the right hand side corner. And in here we have got Mickey's. I have placed some different pets into the little house that matches his in his little front garden and the white fencing around just really ties it all in well together. We then have the exit out into the main like well area of the plaza itself. And then we have this little kind of industrial area where we have the water tower and the outhouse. Next to the fire station, I just think this works so well to make it look a little bit less cozy but also fit well we then have the craftable fire truck in front of the fire station this is a time bending craftable item and then obviously next to that we have a lot more foliage a couple of toy story items to add into that toontown look and then we have the gorgeous centerpiece in here which is honestly i just love how it turned out around the fountain to kind of fill this big gap in the middle Heading out of there in the exit to the forest we have some of the up balloons which bring a lot of colour into this space and then we have the little table for Mickey and friends to hang out on which I added some sweet treats to next to Goofy's and then finally we have the really nice blue picnic blanket in this cosy section and that is the final build I hope you guys did enjoy here are some shots of the build itself as you can see it's very bright very colourful very Toontown I hope in the future we do get some more Toontown stuff so I can do this again maybe and change it it probably won't be a permanent fixture in my valley as Tiana's palace is coming and I will have to probably redo my plaza soon but I thought I would enjoy this build for the next week or so until I have to kind of tear it down again to redo everything as we tend to in Dreamlight Valley. Let me know down below what you guys think. Do you have a Toontown in your valley and is it a permanent fixture or did you kind of just do it for the fun? I would love to be able to keep this but as we just don't have space in the valley I just don't think I can dedicate a whole biome just to this but unfortunately 
that was the case but i really do love it while i did it make sure you like and subscribe and thank you so much for your support on the channel we are so close to 2k subscribers which is crazy to me and we will have a nice big celebration when i do so make sure if you want to be a part of that you do subscribe have a lovely week and i will see you in the next one bye